What's going on, everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Today, I want to talk about these um, outdated and obsolete pro black and pan Africans and why their movement is never going to work, right? Because as I listen to some of these old pan Africans, right, some of the, the old ones, the ones that come on the internet and do live shows and bitch and moan and complain and talk about they want to do all this and do all that, a lot of the things that they say, you know, are, are old, right? and outdated and clearly it's not gonna work right then you got some fake so-called pan-africans who want people to go to the republican party which is clearly retarded right right clearly retarded and they never actually give you a reason why you should go to the republican party or specifically suck trump's eggplant right and I, I watched a pan African. I watched a whole live stream just to be. I was curious of so-called black pan Africans disrespect black people, call black people monkeys, call black people the N word for like two hours. Everybody was like, nigga, 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 nigga. I was like, God dang, they say the N word more than more than white folk. Then I saw them let other non-black people come on the show, right, and spit their white supremacist talking points spit talk all sorts of shit about black people why this whole panel of black people sat there and was like yeah, 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 that's right i mean it was like i was just shocked i was like damn i said they let out they let this white guy or spanish guy whatever the hell he was come on there and voice his frustrations about black supremacy we're at a point where you know people want to say black supremacy it was weird right they let this guy disrespect all black people and all black movements to self-improve themselves with no pushback. And the host was all about it. The host was super, was with it, you know, because, you know, he ate them, nigga. Like, I was like, so I'm looking at all these old, crusty-ass Pan-Africans who actually don't care about their subscribers. Because if you look at, you know, if you look at their comment sections, right, of all these Pan-Africans, right, and look at their viewpoints. Look at who's watching them, right? So you go on the subscriber, you go into the comment section, you look at the profile. Some of them, you see a bunch of white people, you know, cheering on their one black friend, their one conservative friend. You see a bunch of dumbass black truck drivers who were stupid as shit, but they were able to get their CDL and they're making a little bit of money. So now they're talking shit about everybody else in their community, like loud and ignorant as fuck just because they make money because they can drive. And that shit's temporary because the machines, the robots are coming to take your fucking jobs and your ass won't be driving shit, all right? So. Then you got your old crusty, ugly turtle looking motherfuckers who just wanna, they wanna, they think this is the middle ages and they think we're gonna go to war and fight these people like in a conventional battle and shit to get our liberation. Like, like, dude, who, you and what army, right? But with the, with, with all their loud, boisterous enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm towards their own version of ignorance and retardation, you know, these people, you know, they, they don't listen to their subscribers, right? And one guy, said to me he said he don't give a fuck about what his subscribers got to say he think his subscribers are stupid and that he knows better than them right this old fucking black pan-african slash black nationalist retard turtle without a shell looking motherfucker right and then he got the other scammer mouth he just looked like a like you could just see him from now we like I, I can't trust that dude you can tell he looked like he looked like a few things anyway but you listen to him and you, you look at you know, that's what people got to say about them. Because the thing is, what do they always tell you? Your customer's always right, right? When you are supposedly a leader, when you're trying to impose your leadership onto society, or you're trying to force, you're trying to compel people to follow you, you have to inspire them to do so. You have to have such a personality which charisma comes along. This is why it's important to have charisma. This is why a lot of so-called evildoers can manipulate unintelligent people is because they have the charisma to galvanize these people into following them unbeknownst to them or known to them right a lot of these guys they don't they don't care about their subscribers they don't look into the comment section to see what the people who initially decided to follow them what they're saying about them and they don't take it in consideration they're just like fuck them fuck them fuck them fuck them fuck them fuck them well if you say fuck them to your subscribers what you're saying is you're by yourself. What you're saying is you don't take what they got to say in consideration. What you're saying is you are a dictator and what you say is right and everybody else is wrong and they're all stupid and idiots because they are wrong and they should follow you because you are right 
and that's it that's the end of it period right that type of thinking is old and outdated and that's why no one follows them so you see a lot of people got a bunch of subscribers because people like to see what kind of bullshit they're gonna say a lot of people got subscribers because they're just dram they're dramatic they have a lot of drama people like to watch idiots like there's a lot of people who will subscribe to somebody to see what kind of fuckery they're gonna say in the next video they just want to see what kind of ignorant coon ass shit they're gonna say and they don't want to miss a minute of the coonery and they will subscribe but a lot, lot of uh youtubers they believe that their subscriber base is a base is is their uh, is a form of of what do you call it they think their subscriber base is a measurement of their success or a measurement of what it is that they're saying is resonating but in actuality a lot of these dudes are not resonate with anybody but somebody who want to be entertained for a couple hours listening to a dumb nigga talk about a bunch of dumb stupid shit like that and that's just the truth right and if you don't listen to your subscribers to the people that's that you want to follow you because you believe that you're a leader if you don't listen to them well they're not gonna fucking really follow you because you you don't give you don't respect them you just like the people that you say are the enemy because the people that's in power right now they don't listen to us they don't listen to popular culture they don't listen to what the what the people the the majority of the people of this country want politicians and business people is all about what they can put in their pockets how much money they can put in their pockets how much power can they wield how long can they personally wield this power well who's going to give me the capability of wielding this power who's going to give me the money to finance my my ambitions in life they don't actually care about the people you understand what i'm saying it's really all about them but they have enough charisma at least to galvanize some 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 pawns and to do their bidding right and i noticed that a lot of these these ones on the internet that believe that they're famous. Some of, some of these dudes, yo, some of these dudes think because they got 100,000 subscribers that they're actually famous. That shit don't mean nothing, yo. Your 100 subs don't mean shit. Do you understand? Like, if you know anything about the way YouTube works, your subscriber base doesn't mean shit, to be honest. Because people would just subscribe to some shit and then never come back to it. People subscribe to the shit just so they can get the notifications because they want to see a video that you may have put a good thumb screen up, you know, before. Or people just want to see, like I said, they want to see what kind of drama you're going to bring today. Because it's entertaining. Bullshit is entertaining, but never taken seriously. And I noticed a lot of these ones that were at one point being taken seriously, they're not being taken seriously anymore. You can tell by the comments. You can tell by the viewership. You can tell by how consistent people come to their channels. You can also tell by how many other people in, this, in the movement actually participates in their channels. People stop showing up. People don't even... You can even tell... If people who have an opposite view stop showing up because they'll see that this platform is not a good platform to have a debate or build because it's not being it's not serious you can't take it seriously so if you gotta if you have the opposite view of an individual you go on this show and all they are doing is talking shit about you for a couple hours and they're not really getting down to the nitty-gritty they're not answering real questions they're not having any real accountability for the subject matter at hand their, their, their view of winning is just to talk shit who can Joan the best who can talk shit the best who can crack jokes and then they jump you so it may be two or three people jumping you at one time which makes it so a person who wants to have a real conversation and build can't have a real conversation build so people stop coming because it's a waste of time and they're no longer being taken seriously even if their opinion is the opposite of somebody else right you become a clown a joke that's it right and a lot of these retarded pan-africans retarded black power people are doing that and no one likes them and they and, and they keep coming on the internet looking just mad mean they have no solutions they're just complaining about the white man or they're complaining about the black man who don't want to do what he say or don't want to think the way he think and they just complain and complain with no actual solutions none none whatsoever they're just garbage trash that that pumps out negative energy 24 7 24 hours a day and when you when you go throughout your life and you're creating negative energy, that's the energy that's gonna come back on you. That's the energy that comes back on you, no matter what you do. Even if you think that negative energy is, is a type of energy that's gonna be that's gonna make something happen, yeah, something's gonna happen to you, all right, eventually. Because no one is God on this planet, you know, and I mean that in the argument and you know, to the sense of what I'm talking about here. We're all human beings, everybody has an opinion, right? Some people's opinions are based off actual facts living in the real world. And then some people's opinions are based on 
you know, false information or just what team they like, their emotions, how they personally feel about something. Because there's a difference between how you personally feel about something because of your particular or individual life experiences versus the life experiences of the collective and what the collective got going on and how the collective think. Most of these Pan-Africans I noticed, they don't even respect black people. They think black people are stupid, dumb idiots who need a hero to come save them. They don't even think black people are smart enough to know why they're voting the way they voted. They think that black people are just dumb, stupid, welfare criminals who, you know, and, oh yeah, they all hate black women too. They all hate black women because black women ain't shit to these people, right? And that's the number one indicator right there. If, if black people, if they don't like black people, if they call black people on a consistent basis, the nigga, and I only say, the only time you ever hear me call a motherfucker a nigga is when they a nigga. And the only time you ever hear me go visceral and vile and unprofessional is when I'm doing it on purpose towards somebody that deserves that type of energy from me, right? That's the only time I ever do it. It's on purpose, always on purpose. I'm always in control of the emotions that I put out on this YouTube thing. And it's on purpose specifically because people don't deserve respect. Especially if they don't give it to anybody, I don't give it to them, right? But some people, they deserve respect, and I give it to them, right? But yeah, bro, these, yo, this is the era where it's time to clean. Like, like you know, y'all been watching Q Butter. Q Butter that had a several videos talking about we got to clean our community out. All these fakes, phonies, like, don't let them, just don't let people call themselves Pan-African or pro-black, bro. Look at their actions. Look at the shit that they say. Would a pro black person allow somebody to come on their show and be racist towards all black people and then co-sign them? Would a pro black person come on come on camera and call their people degenerate niggas every single day? Every day. Every day. Every day. Would a pro black person do that? Have you ever seen a pro black person in history come down on their people and call it uh, accountability? They shaded and Have you ever seen any pro black people talk shit? about black people on a consistent basis even the old geezer talk shit i heard them talk shit about nigeria he was talking he was talking he's talking yo some of these people are so big-headed right because their youtube channel get three four likes five shares and they made forty dollars that week they get so big-headed they just say shit out their mouth and i'll be like what kind of like if somebody of note heard that they would instantly view you as an enemy any real pan-african will view a lot of these so-called Pan-Africans as the actual enemy of Pan-Africanism and pro-black, right? But we got so many snakes in the grass, we gotta get rid of them, right? Like Q-Butter and, and uh, Michi X, you know, they've been on a campaign as of late, you know, cause this polite thing just really put it out to light, right? But there's a lot more we need to get rid of. We need to purify our community, those people that really wanna take action, those people that really got new ideas, cause guess what? You know what young black people want? They want y'all to show it with passion, they want to talk about, they want to talk about the environment because it's a planet they're going to have to live in much longer than us. They want to talk about universal health care so they can actually be able to, that's the type of stuff they want. They want to talk about doing something actually for police brutality towards black people and they're not trying to hear a bunch of politi pol political mumbo jumbo word salad about anything from anybody who don't plan on doing anything. They don't care about having the, the, the young people. They don't care about having all these fucking guns like you guys. They don't care about this whole second. They, they don't care about that. The youth does not care about every person having a gun. They don't want, that's not what they into. And no matter how much your old ass is into it, no matter how much you believe you need this to survive and all that stuff or how you got to prepare because all the white folks are doing it. Yeah, we know they're doing it. That's what they're into. They've always been into that shit. And there are a lot of black folks who's also into that shit. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have a weapon and you shouldn't be able to protect yourself. Of course you should be able to do all that stuff. I'm, I'm pro-gun. I'm pro, you know, Second Amendment and all that stuff. But at the same time, as an actual warfighter who knows what these things, what these things, these weapons do in real life, not for fun, up front, in person, I know for a fact that none of these semi-automatic weapons have any business being in civilian hands. None of them. The only thing we should be doing is shotguns, rifles, and pistols. That's it. Everything else is bullshit. Everything else is unnecessary, right? And a shotgun is probably the best, it's the best home security system you can get. Shotgun, period. So I don't want to hear all that AR-15, semi-automatic, I don't want to hear none of that shit. Shotgun, that's number one, all right? It's better than a pistol. But anyway, it's all about what the youth want. And a lot of times throughout our history, the adults, right, the people who think that they know better, they disregard the youth. 
Just like all these old geezers in Africa and America. We got all these 80 year old politicians and shit and everywhere around the world this era of these, these guys, these 80, 90 year old guys who still think they know best. And all the policies that they wanna, that they wanna implement are temporary policies that they themselves from their old age and their family benefit from. And they don't, they can give a shit about doing anything that benefits any of their past when they die. Because if you 70, you 80, 90 years old, guess what? You don't have to deal with the consequences of the shit that you wanna do. But guess what, these young 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 30 year olds, they're gonna have to deal with all the consequences of what these 80, 90 year old geezers do. Windows 95 like shit. They Windows 95, right? We trying to get Windows, got, we, trying, we trying to get Windows 13, 14 now. These guys are still Windows 95 thinking they got, they got the ideas, the, the brand new ideas that's gonna move us forward. But well, clearly, after 40, 50, 60 years of being in polit politics, they ain't done shit but enrich themselves. Every one of them. We got politicians having strokes and shit at press conferences and shit. Both Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and Mitch McConnell, both within the last two months, had old people moments where they just glitched out. They just glitched out, and we acting like the shit ain't happening. We got these guys that's like a they like they like a, 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 a step away from 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 ending it all. They like they one one wrong step and they fall. That's it, right? Yet we still acting like that's the only choices we got in America, right? That's how stupid shit done got. But the thing is, the youth they're tired of our these old people in their old ways and their old ways of thinking and thinking that these young people these, don't have just as many great ideas as we do. Guess what? These younger folks are older. They're smarter than us. They are smarter than us. They know better than us. Why? Because they grew up with the internet. They grew up being inundated with information at a young age. While we was outside playing, right? We had small stimul yeah, we had moments of small stimulation where we read a book every now and then. But these people are online absorbing massive amount of world information at a cyclic rate. They are much smarter than us and they see that there are solutions around the world that we can implement within our own communities that we, they would like to implement. And they're tired of these old motherfuckers when they want to do their little pan-African movements or their black power movement or their white power movement or the brown movement still using their old archaic barbaric ways thinking they're going to get some shit done when they've been talking the same shit for 30, 40 goddamn years ain't done nothing but enrich themselves. That's it. Right? So people like me, I understand that the youth are important. I understand that what the youth want, the youth gonna get. And if us and if we, the older generation, if we don't give them what they want, they're gonna move us out the way. Right? Or you're just gonna be some old geezer on the internet, still wondering why you only got 12 people on your live, you've been talking for years, and nobody resonates with you, but you seem to think you know best. Right? Or you're gonna be on your channel where it's gonna be a goddamn gaggle of coons sitting there for two, three hours. Talking shit about black people, calling them more niggas than the KKK did in fucking 200 years, right? Advocating and promoting and letting white people come in your comment section, come on your panels and talk shit about black people without any resistance, calling yourself pan Africans and pro black while your fucking old ass truck drivers who ain't got nothing but a sixth grade education, but they can drive the shit out that fucking big rig and they can change all the gears, but they seem to fucking know what's best for black people. Get the fuck out of here. Nobody is gonna respect any of these people. Right, and all of you subscribers who are new to me, right, new to this whole thing, because I know there's a lot coming on deck. Just keep in mind, just because they call themselves pro-black, does not mean they are pro-black. Just because they call themselves pan-African, don't mean they pan-African. And just because they seemingly say big words and put them together, and they seem like they know something out of the dictionary that you don't know, don't mean that they're smart. Just because they can crank out some big words, don't make them smart at all, right? Pay attention to what they do, Pay attention to, to who they actually respect and care about. Pay attention how they interact with people who have opposing views from them. Just pay attention and you'll see whether they're real or it's just a performance for YouTube likes, shares, and cash apps, all right? Anyway, that's all I got to say. This Afro Think Tank, learn something, teach something. I'm out.